everyone, I think we'll begin with our webinar, keeping the times that we have. Just let me begin uh, on this uh, webinar. So uh, on the occasion of the International Plastic Bag Free Day, I welcome you all to the fourth webinar of the FIKI's B4E, that is Business for Environment webinar series. Today's webinar is on rethinking the plastic paradigm, plastic waste management and alternatives to plastic. Uh, previously, we had three webinars. Uh, the first one uh, starting off in the month of uh, March, uh, sorry, um, April, May, and June, one in each month. The first one was on recycling as the seventh resource for future economy. Uh, second one was on coexisting biodiversity and business for long-term sustainability. And the third one on the World Environment Day, it was on harnessing benefits of nature-based solutions for ecosystem restoration. Now we are back with the fourth the series that is on plastic waste management and alternatives to plastic. We all know that plastic has emerged as a marvel during the recent COVID-19 pandemic, where it was adapted to various critical uses, including protection of frontline workers from virus. Despite the considerable benefits that the plastic offer for the future and the present for the future the present approach to their production use and disposable raises concerns about the environment and human health while avoiding plastic waste generation is overall preferable environmentally safe management of plastic waste once it is generated is very crucial and the enabling environment that guide that guidelines and regulations provide in doing so are also of utmost importance in the uh, current uh, scenario. Businesses being the largest producers and users of plastics are introducing sustainable practices and uh, are innovating and rethinking uh, themselves to facilitate a shift towards effective plastic waste management and finding sustainable alternatives. Today's webinar aims to provide perspectives of multiple stakeholders, public and private, while addressing the production and use of plastic, positive actions being taken by businesses and industry, and to provide alternatives to plastics, highlighting the learnings from global experiences, if any. So I welcome you all once again. We have a distinguished set of speakers for today's session. Uh, Mr. Tushar Patnayak is the corporate head, EHS, EPR, and sustainability at Dabur India Limited, taking care of India and SARC countries. Uh, we have Dr. Sundar Balakrishnan, is the secretary of Indian Compostable Polymer Association, ICPA, and GM of India, Nature Tech, India Private Limited. Dr. Smita Mohanty, Director and Head Principal Scientist for Laboratory for Advanced Research in Polymer Polymeric Materials at CPET. Uh, Mr. Akshaya Rath is the co-founder and CEO of Ecorex, EcoX. And uh, Mr. Ajay Mittal, Director of Climate Change Programs India and South Asia for EarthDay.org. So without much ado, let me invite our first speaker of the day, Mr. Tushar Patnaik. Over to you, Mr. Patnaik. Uh, thank you and good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vikram and all the MEN panelist member of uh, different areas. So today, yes, today is the day is, I can say one of the 3rd July, the International Bank Free Plastic Free Bank Day. And what you told, the last uh, in the month of April to May, whatever the topics you have been covered. And today, what the topic is there, if you correlate the thing, there is very interrelated topic. Because if you see, it's all related to sustainable journey and to achieve that target of net zero, whatever the topic has been discussed and today which you have been discussing, these all are very, very important and very, very correlation with that topic. 
and today we are talking about rethinking of plastic paradigm and plastic waste management coming back to the point if you see starting from 2021 uh after the month of october and till date there is a lot of changes has been done by ministry of environment and forest and ctcb regulatory body if you see the changes we think that the changes is in a positive direction first whenever things is be uh, one of the things are going to implement normally people take it and accept it it is a huge problem but as a industry i can say thinking from a nation point of view thinking from a global point of view these are a positive states i can which is implemented by the government why government think that at the present scenario if you don't think today and work start today maybe in the next 30 to 40 years it is very difficult to survive the universe because day by day the pollution of plastic is dra- drastically increasing and if you are not thinking at present how to minimization of a waste of plastic waste management second sustainable waste of plastic management third to reduce the virgin plastic approach of three r method reduce recycle and reuse there are many things has been implemented in last one and a half year and two year though it has been started as atm rules in 2016 but the momentum has very much progressed in the last one and two and a half year apart from the cpr there are a lot of things which is going to be a challenge for everybody in the year of 24 and 25 in terms of reuse next is your recycling and recycling plastic canteen when i call it as a challenge when there is a challenge you should think that there is a more and more opportunity in the market that is one second lot of things is taking initiative to reduce the alternative plastics but there are many things if you think this is not a very simple journey it's a very very challengeable path first we have to see that what are the alternatives that government has already from last year 1st july 2022 ban of single use of plastic many things which has not been recycled and is lettering on the environment that has been taken and as a single use of plastic and many things has been banned but the things which has been banned is not the end of the journey i can say it is the pin is the only tip of the iceberg but wherever it is possible to reduce the alternative plastics everybody is trying to reduce that plastics but it is not a simple journey but it is but it is not a simple journey because when alternative okay for a government prospective view regulatory point of view yes they are implementing many things and implement but implementation on the state level depending upon the prioritize it is slightly difficult but as a industry as a consultant as a experts and everybody today india is working on a various aspects in challenges which do not think a win if in in globally also many countries is not accepting the targets and challenges which india is taking the target in the upcoming year of 2024 and 25 and 26 and 27 these are many things i think once the panel discussion will move will be more discussion the topic one the thing but the concept but the thing is that alternative of plastics if you see is a few rare in the market i can say it is very very difficult to remove the entire plastic from the universe but it can be reduced it can be minimized to a sustainable way of management and alternate to the plastics things has been started but it will take a long journey to achieve that target i think once the discussion will go on will be more discussed on that point thank you mr patnaik for that uh, statement um moving on i would request uh, dr bala krishnan yeah thank you thank you mr vikram and uh, very good evening to everyone uh, can i share my screen if that's okay uh, yes you can okay uh 
it just says uh, host disabled screen sharing so i think you should be able to do it now okay okay sure yeah got it thank you just give me one second here okay so uh, uh, i basically represent the indian compostable uh, polymer association icpa and uh, icpa uh, we are a set of individuals and organizations committed to bring awareness about bioplastics uh, we represent raw material manufacturers converters distributors and we are affiliated to other global bioplastic organizations such as european uh, pan pan pacific australian as well as the bpi in the us now when we look at bioplastics this is probably the word biodegradable is a highly greenwashed term you must be seeing a lot of people talk about these words of bioplastic biobased biodegradable compostable essentially when we talk of compostable plastics or i would use the word certified compostable plastics they are materials which break down into organic constituents in a certain composting environment and there are standards to which compostable plastics are certified so in india for example we have the is iso 17088 standard which is basically tested by cipet and approved by the central pollution control board so companies who are manufacturing compostable plastics have to meet this standard and you have a whole variety of applications today which have come out in compostable plastics as you can see right from a very simple application of a bin liner to coatings uh, bags uh, injection molding products mulching films food packaging thermoforming so typically compostable plastics are now being used as alternates to most single use plastic application now this compostability refers to an end of life situation now there are also materials which are called as bio based which refers to the beginning of life of the product so essentially what bio based talks about is where is the carbon in the material coming from and if that carbon is coming from a renewable feedstock then you call that as a bio based material all bio based materials are not necessarily biodegradable or compostable and all compostable materials are not necessarily bio based so as far as the indian government is concerned there is a certain certification scheme for compostable plastics and this certification looks at different components the one component is the carbon to carbon dioxide conversion then you have a certain disintegration ecotoxicity earthworm toxicity plant toxicity so these are some of the studies now typically compostable plastics or bioplastics are essentially made out of several polymers a very common polymer which all of you, all of you would be aware of is polylactic acid which is also called as pla now pla is a renewable resource material which is fully biodegradable and compostable but you could also have a material like pbat which is polybutylene adipate copolymerized with terephthalate polymers which is essentially fossil fuel based but which has biodegradability or compostability as an end of life and then you could have cellulose as esters which are basically bio based but it need not be compostable so just to give you a overall landscape of how you can have polymers which are bio based and not compostable and also bio based and compostable now what is the what are some of the challenges which actually gives into a certain opportunity typically compostable plastics did not come into existence because there was a problem with plastics the challenge is that there's a lot of food waste or organic waste which is present today which is from a post consumer perspective which is potentially getting landfill and as you know landfill is a very poor repository for this organic waste so when you take the organic waste and convert it into a more value add product which could be composted and you get a manure out of it then that creates a certain opportunity in this case 
the main function of a compostable plastic started in saying that how can you take that organic waste from its source and move it to a certain composting infrastructure so if you were to collect your food waste in plastic bags then there has to be a process of separating the waste from the bag which then what do you do with the bag so you had another problem that's when compostable plastics industry started evolving to say can we make a product which can be used to collect this organic waste and take it to composting so that along with the waste the bag could be potentially put into the composting pile and it gets completely converted to manure having said this over the especially in the last 10 15 years there's been a lot of uh, insurgence on uh, food service like quick quick service restaurant culture has really come up in a big way and as a result a lot of plastics today are being used in single use food contact applications right from uh, a plate to a cup to a glass to a coated paper uh, to a lid straw and making all these products as compostable and integrating that with the end of life infrastructure creates a huge opportunity for the compostable plastics industry to create a zero waste model and this is how for example you could have a partnership uh, scenario so for example compostable products or bags they are watertight they are stain resistant they have grease resistance and then they have a good sealing capability now when you look at a paper bag it is biodegradable and compostable but paper in principle does not have a good stain resistance grease resistance or a water resistance property and paper by itself as a product is not sealable so when you take a paper bag and either laminate it or extrusion coat it with a compostable polymer you get a product which is also biodegradable and compostable but has the good properties of both compostable bags as well as paper bags so this is a classic case of how technologies will essentially combine together to get a better product in the market which can provide that value now in terms of industrial composting a lot of debates going on in terms of where are the composting infrastructures i mean if if we talk about composting and what i would like to clarify here is compostable bags do not require any specific composting infrastructure which has to be built today whatever we do with a food waste and please understand that plastics only account for 5% of the of the waste stream more than 40% is the food waste or the organic waste which has a bigger problem to handle so essentially these compostable bags align with natural composting municipal composting sites and as you can see uh, i'm just going to skip this uh, there is a i'm just going to go to one slide here which uh, yeah talks about the current composting infrastructure available in the country where this is as taken from the central pollution control board website that there is enough composting infrastructure available in the country the challenge is really for us is how do we take these products from the source in a segregated condition to these infrastructures okay now coming back to some of the process of industrial composting which essentially happens because there is a certain aerobic bacterial activity which takes place which takes the temperatures to a certain point and then the biodegradation process starts happening uh there's also studies done life cycle analysis studies which show which talk about compostable carry bags having definitely a better lca performance and this is also available on the central pollution control board website and definitely composting creates value add products it's not like landfilling landfilling is more a process where you just keep dumping it and there's a there's a lot of anaerobic activity in landfilling there's no air whereas in composting you actually create value added products typically there is an 80% uh, volume reduction of waste so when you talk of composting uh, if you if you start you get about 80% volume reduction and you get a value added manure as well and the benefits of these compost it can be used as a uh, as a nutrient source for plants and there is also proven data that shows that it actually improves the soil workability it improves the soil water holding capacity and it's 
very good alternate to typical soil amendment products. So when you talk of a closed loop, today everyone is talking of circularity, circular economy, and typically what is being advocated by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation is also talking about how do you build circularity into what we do. And compostable products help build this circularity. So when we first look at this whole cycle here, you start with a, either an agricultural input or it could be a petroleum-based input. There is a certain product which is made from the product you basically convert it into a compost once you collect the waste and then this compost is applied back into the soils and from here the product is remade so compostable plastics build that circularity in whatever we do in terms of providing that closed loop this was a project that icpa conducted with uh, basf uh, Kalyani Municipal Corporation, Krishi Rasyan in the West and the, and with support from the West Bengal government to look at uh, the Kalyani project where there was a community based composting setup being done. And uh, it was essentially there was there was a lot of education, awareness and supply of these compostable bags to to a local community and then shown how it can be composted. So as you can see, these bags were used by the local households. To collect the, all their organic and food waste, there was there was an there was an awareness program which was conducted on a continuous basis, and how after three months we could see that the entire bags along with the food waste was converted to a value-added compost. Now coming to processing, one question which typically comes up is okay, so if we use compostable plastics, then do we have to change equipment? Do we have to change 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 our machinery? And the answer is no. You can use your existing plastics. I, can, I want to show you some videos here. So this is a typical uh, this is a typical blown machine uh, which is being used to make. Uh, and this is again another small video which talks about a sheet paper coating. This is these are all conventional equipments which are being used for for compostable for regular plastics and as you can see here this is a cup which is actually made with a compostable pla coating inside so it provides the it provides the same performance as a conventional plastic this is also uh, some more products that you could see this is a blown film extrusion this is a thermoformed sheet line which is being used to make uh, cups So what is the way ahead with compostables as an alternative? Uh, as I spoke about the circular economy, today, a lot of what's going on is very linear. So you manufacture, make the product, use it, and dispose it. And you can build circularity through several ways. We can either recycle, we can reuse, we can refurbish. Or if you look at this side of the left-hand side of this figure, you can talk about how do you convert it into a feedstock? How do you compost? So these are different ways. So you, you can have chemical recycling. For example, you can take PLA and depolymerize it to a lactic monomer, or you can take PLA and compost it and create a biological form of recycling. So essentially, compostable plastics build in that whole circularity. What are some of the advantages? Obviously, as I told you, a lot of applications are today coming out with compostable plastics. And, to, and as you see in India, in the last three to four years, ever since the government came out with uh, this, uh, you know, approving compostable plastics as alternates to single use, there is almost over 200 companies who are certified by the Central Pollution Control Board, tested by CIFET and certified by Central Pollution Control Board to manufacture and sell compostable plastics in India. So that's number one. Number two, we have a host of applications right from film, blown cast, extrusion, lamination, sheet, profile, blow molding, injection molding, thermoforming, which also shows that the product has spread into a large variety of applications, which could be potential alternates to conventional plastics. And these equipments, these applications are done on equipments, which is exactly what is being used for conventional plastics 
probably there's a very minimal change you might have to do like maybe add a drying system or something like that but nothing major to process compostable plastics there's also a lot of work going on on the downstream side in terms of creating the infrastructure and the government has also been very supportive in terms of uh, you know approving this infrastructure creation and finally these composts have also started going into the market creating a certain value for these for making those composts so there is a certain value in the compost being used as a soil amendment product now when we talk of accessibility typically there is a certain way in which you have to create the awareness so obviously there is a awareness creation that has to percolate right from the policy makers to the state authorities and there has to be a clear differentiations of the various alternatives see today what we believe as an industry is compostable industry is one solution to a plastic challenge and again i want to say that plastics are great materials i don't think we are trying to challenge the fact that plastics have provide do provide a lot of impetus the problem is when you talk of single use plastics and short life span disposable packaging where it's very difficult to collect and recycle then you are looking at alternates and even there compostable is one of the alternates you have paper you have jute you have cotton there are so many other alternates so there has to be a differentiation there coming to infrastructure and segregation there has to be some support from the government in terms of looking at how do we do color coding how do we segregate these materials so that it's easy to be taken into composting sites the third point is the accessibility of the raw material because in india currently there are no base raw material manufacturers of materials like pvat or pla all the base raw materials are imported into the country and if there can be a fairly simple policy to do this then that would help in growing the industry even further and also support manufacturing for these basic rms like pla pvat with certain you know technologies and maybe some partnership with the government could be could be looked at and then looking at the supply chain it's very important to have a certain supply chain where there is complete transparency right because in the compostable value chain you have the base raw material providers and then you have a set of compounders who take those base raw materials and convert it into compounds because you can't take a pla directly and make a product and then you have the processors and then you have the end uh, end uh, consumer so there is in this what happens what we are seeing is some states for example there is a policy in the center which talks of compostable plastics being approved and then there are some states who have also banned some of these materials so if there can be some alignment in this regard that would also bridge the gap and uh, help in creating a very sustainable model and what i would really uh, like to conclude and say is compostable plastics are are also becoming more value added see today we are talking of applications like liner bags carry bag but there's also a host of other applications for example laminates which is a big uh, subject is also now being uh, looked at with compostable plastics so the point is that compostable plastics can be merged or can be created as hybrids with other products that can create more value added materials and you have a lot of standards globally uh, the indian government is also using the is iso 17088 which is clearly defined and compostable plastics are exempted from the minimum thickness so they, there is no restriction of minimum thickness as compared to as as like a conventional plastic and definitely it's a value added product you don't require any special equipment and it can be used in it 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 helps supports the plastic industry and this creates circularity as a whole so uh with this i just want to conclude and once again i want to thank uh, vikram and the team for this opportunity and uh, thank you so much thank you dr balakrishnan
that was a good overview of the compostable plastics and their advantages and usages. Um, we have some questions, but we'll take the questions at the end once all the five yeah. speakers have uh, uh, spoken. So now uh, moving on uh, to, doc, um, to Dr. Mohanty. Okay. Okay, so at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Vikramji and uh, the entire team of FIKI for, for giving me an opportunity to speak in this forum. So it's all about rethinking the plastic paradigm and plastic waste management and alternatives to plastics. Mm, now, uh, if you see the global plastic waste generation, we are still much less. Like you can see, this is a recent data statistics which we have collected. It's uh, nothing but 3.43 metric MT. So, uh, and you can see the major uh, uh, production of the thermoplastics starting from PET and then HDP, PVC, LDP, PP, PS, and minuscule quantity, what you can say of compostable plastics, which Dr. Sundar has already shared. Now, let's see what is the status of plastics consumption in India. Now, if you see the consumption in India, this is a recent source. 40% is approximately uh, is PP and then which is followed by HTP 19%. Then you have 18% is PVC, then LLDP is 17%, 16% is uh, LDP and you have to the tune of very minuscule percentage that is 5%, 0.55% I think they represent of in case of your compostable plastics. And if you see the CAGR percentage, we stand at exactly 21% in million tons. Now, so as regards to the plastics waste generation, if you see the waste generation now from 1.6%, we have gone to 3.46%. So what is this 3.446? So uh, there is a growth rate of CAGR growth rate of 20.7%. It is all because of during the COVID period, plastics were the real saver because we were using many kind of materials like your the entire PP kits and everything were being uh, produced and there was a huge uh, amount of quantum of plastic waste generation also was there in case of your uh, plastic during the COVID scenario. Now, as regards to EPR, now after the EPR targets have come up, as you can see here, there are very clear classification of four different categories of plastics. Like we have a rigid category plastics, which falls under category one. Then we have a flexible pl pl plastic packaging of single layer or multi-layer category two. Category three is for your MLP. Category four, they have again segregated as regards to compostable plastics. If you see the classification, now you can see the majority of them, the pink color is your flexible plastics. Then followed by you have 62, uh, as you can see, 62 to 93.87. This is a recent data statistics which I have collected from the EPR portal. Then followed by you have a category one, then you have a rigid plastic. And then last one is your category four, 10,883.08 TPA is your compostable plastics. So what is the recycling scenario? Let's have a look at the recycling scenario. Then we can understand that what exactly happens in case of the recycling of the plastics. Now, earlier CPCB rate, what you were seeing, if you see the CPIT CPCB report of 2015-16, then at that point of time, we had 60.6% recycling capacity. Like India was probably the major, uh, we had a major, uh, you know, component of recycling sector and thanks to our rag pickers and all. So 60.6% was the recycling scenario. And then subsequently over the years, if you see, so 2018-19, it, it got reduced to 43.7. And now if you take the statistics of 1920, it is 29.3%. So what is the reason that the recycling you know, the recycling factor is going down because whether because the plastics are taken as a refuse derived fuel or it is being used where it is used or it is incinerated. So why is the recycling sector going down? I mean, why is the percentage of waste which is being recycled is day by day, day by day, the percentage is dropping. Now, if you see the quantified data of UL end of life sectors, majority of UL 94.5% we have in me mechanical recycling followed by co-processing in cements is 3.63%, 3 
waste to oil is 1.46 waste to energy 0.97 then you have industrial composting still at a very lower capacity 0.31% and co-processing in steel industry that is one more scenario which has opened 0.04%. Now let's have a look at the PWM rules. All of us know that the PWM rules have been revised but if you see it started way back in 1999 and then subsequently we got many kinds of PWM rules which got revised every now and then. So what is that? Now, the first recycling rules, it mandated the restricted use of polythene bags, that is 20 micrometer bags or less. Then 11, 11 again, a national blanket ban on the plastic material in chassis for storing, packing, of selling of gutka, tobacco, pan masala, etc. Then recycled carry bags needed to have a BIS specification. Uniform thickness shall not be less than 40 microns. So these are all the rules which we came across in 2011. And subsequently, what happened in 16, we increased the plastic carry bags 40 to 50 microns. And then maximum thickness was 50 micron for plastic sheets. Minimum thickness criteria not applicable for again for the compostable carry bags. Now, again in 2016, we had a mandate of EPR. So way back in 2016, EPR was introduced. But EPR now, if you see the EPR regulation have come into place and everywhere in the dashboard, if you see the CPCB portal dashboard, we have a proper mandate of your EPR. So collection of plastic waste management fee through pre-registration of the producer and importers to promote plastic waste for road construction. So this was highlighted during 2016. And then again, we had a defined, uh, you know, criteria for the producers, for the retailers, for the generators, as well as for the ULP. Then subsequently, we had an amendment again rules in 2018. So what was that? It was basically phasing out of the MLP, which are non-recyclable or non-energy recoverable or no alternatives. So every now and then, government has been trying to see to it that we do not have a problem of plastic pollution. Our rules are perfectly intact. Yes, there is a rule which exists, but it needs proper redefining it needs to be implemented on the ground level now let's see current status that is your status of waste management as on 2021 2022 so what is that 2021 there was uh, if you recall during uh, world environment day 2018 there was different there was a huge uh, you know declaration clarion call for banning the single-use plastics because they are the real pollu uh, polluters. So it was concluded that few of the uh, single-use plastics needs to be banned. So accordingly, if you see the manufacturing, import, stocking, distribution, sale, and many of the around 17 products has been, 19 products has been banned. So among them, we have the plastic sticks, like you have earbuds, balloons, plastic flags, then you candy sticks, ice cream sticks, polystyrene thermocol then from 1st of july 2022 all the cutlery items wrapping or packing films like sweet boxes on the cigarette over wraps then you have invitation cards straws and stirrers eps roadside banners so these are some of the uh, single use plastics which were banned then subsequently we had a better regulation of your epr that was because we need to embrace a circular economy. So everyone is talking about circular economy. So how we are going to embrace this kind of circular economy? That was the major thrust was on the processing of the plastic waste. Then again, annual targets were given to the PI view. That means producer, importers, brand owners need to have their annual targets on the plastic waste they are producing. Then there are obligation of reuse, recycle and use of the recycled content. End of life disposal also was defined. And some of the key uh, stakeholders includes the CPCB and the SPCBs as well as the plastic waste processors. And some of the certificates were also issued. So you can find an entire dashboard or a portal, EPR portal where in you get the exact statistics of the PIBOs exact statistics of how much the waste is being contributed by each state, how much waste is being produced, 
what are the criteria of waste production or your end of life option whether it goes for mechanical recycling or it goes for any chemical recycling or it is going in cement cleans so all the detailed statistics are again available now you can see here as i have uh, already shared again the type of plastics have also been mandated like if you have a rigid category plastic packaging that falls under category 1 category 2 again for the flex flexible ones category 3 is for the mlp ones and category 4 is for uh, so these are the mandated targets specified for uh, the reuse of the rigid packaging or your recycled plastics fulfilling the epr uh, obligations through recycling and compostable plastics the remaining epr target needs to be fulfilled with the ul options and uh, so accordingly if you see a typical epr working model like a plastic waste a producer band owners and importers they generate the plastic waste then this plastic waste is again segregated and channelized through local bodies and other channels and it is being processed by the uh, plastic waste process processes and you need to get any epr certificates for that purpose so for implementation of a typical plastic waste in a city what we need to have basically as you might have uh, noticed that uh, recently government has been giving lot of thirst on creation of mrf that is material recycling facility so what is that so in that like in several forums it has been discussed that the source segregation in india is lacking so it's the same thing what also what needs to be propagated like a pwm model needs to be divided into four components first is plastic waste recycling and management then you have a material recovery because other than plastics there are other wastes as well nobody sees that but because the major quantum of litter which we notice in the plastic in the in the in the litter is your plastics so municipal dry waste needs to be collected in the form of like you have a paper or you have a plastics or you have household rejects any post consumer plastics or packaging waste old clothes and other things biomedical waste again it needs to have a separate segregation biodegradable municipal waste like uh, when you have a kitchen waste cooked or uncooked waste or any vegetable market rejects or rejects or your garden waste that needs to be collected separately then you have a hazardous waste that is your sanitary napkins or your diapers used diapers etc so all these kind of things we need to separate it out we need to segregate out then the component 3 is a institutionalization of the mrf in the government bodies then component 4 is we need to have awareness programs we need to have education we need to educate the people so that's how the typical pwm in a city can work now let's go to so these are all about the plastic waste management and recycling criteria now post the scp bans we have numerous uh, scps like my previous speaker dr sundar has already shared that compostables are one are also one of the criteria where in this can fit into the 19 categories of products which are banned so for example you have a plastic cutlery you can go for self self typical type of alternatives like you can go for a stainless steel or melamine which is available plant based now majorly bagasse based things are coming up in the market majorly bagasse based in the airports and counters you will find bagasse based items are being sold in the market where it is an alternative to the single use plastic cutlery porcelain based you have you need to have then compostable polymers are also one of them but this requires again bamboo based and paper based or compostable polymers it requires a due certification from cpcb as per astm 6868 or it is as per iso is 17088 now similarly if you see the plastic straws many items it comes to sip it for certification okay so plastic uh, straws like you have stainless steel straws can go into that bamboo straws can go compostable straws nowadays lot of compostable straws are also coming to us for certification purpose even you can have glass straws or paper straws so you can also have different kinds of alternatives to the straws now let's go for earbuds the earbuds wooden earbuds or cotton swabs with bamboo sticks these are some of the alternatives even for pvc banner you can go for a recyclable or a corrugated material compostables can also be uh, taken into consideration you can go for canvas also even instead of banners 
let's have a modernized phenomena of uh, you know led based wherever you know cost effective cost is not a major criteria instead of going for a uh, non biodegradable pvc banners let's go for a led banners that can be also a reusable uh, material altogether now wherever how do we simplify the selection of these kind of alternatives first is like one of the studies which uh, dr uh, sundar has shared that we need to have a lca based approach yes so we are con- currently doing an lca based approach for different kinds of alternatives so we are halfway under uh, in the study and shortly you will be finding that with the association with unep we are doing that study so uh, plastic cutlery so in the plastic cutlery what we are going to decide like how much climate change is it going to put if you are going for compostable ones if you are going for paper ones or if you are going for reusable ones whether it is stainless steel or you take it melamine or porcelain whether it is how much is the carbon footprint how much is the you know uh, climate change or water depletion because in drought areas india uh, you know water uh, drought has been a major problem in in the country so water problem has been a major problem so if we are substituting any kind of single use plastic with the reusable items like uh, stainless steel or porcelain or anything so what is the footprint you are getting how much water depletion you are getting what is the detergent source like you anyways you are washing it for proper hygienity you need to wash it with the detergent solution so what is that so those kind of factors can be decided through a life cycle approach and possibly in indian context if you find many of the lca based studies has been done in a uh, european context or in us based but very minimum studies has been done in indian perspective currently we are doing it and we'll be coming out uh, with the report very shortly similarly rigid amenables like we, what we are promoting here is that instead of a plastic wrapper in the sweet boxes go for a multi use bag go for a multi use box you can use it you can use it and fully and then you can multi use it and then you can go for end of life go for recycling it so importance on recycling uh, a, a epr based on moef notification so like carry bags now currently carry bags beyond 120 microns has been introduced in the market and you can go for compostable so make make it reuse it and then cloth bags wherever it is required you can also go for cloth bags and the key deciding factors is that you are promoting recycling and sustainable plastic waste management if you are using the carry bags beyond 180 120 microns now otherwise industrial composting facility as a end of life option otherwise washing it where water is not a problem now so these are some of the eco labels like you are going for a thermocol decoration so instead of that go for go for corrugated paper go for nature derived materials go for a fabric based banner or lcd so you can use that all those things into the into uh, as a as a matter of fact so these are some of the things like uh, some of the global developments which you can see here like uh, your diago has an unilever has come out with major eco bottle which is nothing but the collaboration one like a paper coated with a compostable ones similarly lecta uh, itc they have come up with a biodegradable coating then loreal has come up with a cardboard tube stora and so with a grease resistance paper board tube which uses 70% less plastic paper board toppers have also come up then you have edible wrapper uh, packaging paper like with kfc has come up with different types of edible ink to print the colorful patterns this cutlery items it is very famous bakeys which is a bangalore based company which you can find that this is a edible spoon which is made up of sorghum with wheat and rice flour so you can eat it along with the ice cream similarly the edible cup like kapufi in bang bulgaria other type of things like already we know that natural fiber based composites are being prepared so in that 30 to 60% of bio based wood fibers are introduced into fossil based feed stock and then you can go for 3d printing application or injection molding or extrusion so bio composites also we see in case of your automotive similarly dell has also replaced eps by bamboo weed straw or cardboard packaging and some of the plates and bowls as you can see in the left hand side of my slide that this is very common in india 
way everywhere in the eastern zone especially areca palm leaves are being sold as a you know these are being sold so here this kind of material is being amply propagated similarly bamboo based straws and other things which you find it uh, as the alternatives of the single use plastics so what are the ways forward go for innovation in selection and design of uh, alternatives but you need to assess it go for a life cycle based at, uh, approach adding a eco level will lessen the visibility of other levels like lc cradle to grave promoting sustainable recycling business model yes government is promoting recycling business model but we need to have a proper design we need to have a proper end that the recycling needs to be you know uh, it has to have some value addition in the recycled grades introduction of recycled content in the scps then we need to have availability of recycling facilities if you see from the cpcb portal itself we found when we are studying it now recently we have taken up a study we we are assessing the recycling facility available in the entire country we find that apart from indoor or mp who uh, were in uh, you know they are they are managing the plastic waste in a very nice uh, way and they have a system of managing it but other states we are basically we do not have enough recycling facility so that is why Mm, uh, that is why we find much you know the waste management is not proper in many of the states now adopting uh, chemical recycling techniques then another thing so uh, say no to littering which, which is a major thing and industrial composting facility yes today we are having industry compost industrial composting facility uh, in india but still this needs to be enhanced because at the end of the day right now if you see the compostable manufacturers in cpcb registered manufacturers is now to the tune of more than 230 230 240 odd which is going which is likely to increase so we need to have more of industrial composting facility in all the cities and methods for compostables needs to be devised at the end we need to have some financial uh, incentives with subsidy and funding support of course wherever r and d still we are importing the raw materials why not we have a technology here in india why not the researchers they combine they give their opinion they give their entire technology to the industries so that the manufacturing capabilities is being established here the synthesis methods is being established here now so uh, we need to embrace the alternative solutions without affecting the business so that is all at last i would like to thank uh, fiki once again for giving me an opportunity to speak in this forum thank you thank you dr smita for that elaborate presentation on plastic waste management through epr and showcasing so many options as an alternatives to plastics i'm sure in the coming years we can see we will see a lot of uh, similar products in market and industry taking those up thank you once again dr smita um moving ahead i would request uh mr rath to uh, make his speech and presentation on the subject oh uh, thank you very much am i audible uh, yes you are audible yes. oh i doubt it let me thank you fiki for giving me an opportunity to speak on this forum really very very interesting observations by dr and madam mahanti uh, a lot of things to learn really you know a plastic substitute or advanced technology need to be implemented in this space but being a plastic waste management player in the industry uh, i would like to uh, invite your attention the way epr or pwm rule as such evolved in india under mofcc and pollution control board so i pointed some key success, successful factors which has really helped and the way uh, epr implementation results are visible uh, say after 3 4 years the so first of all it thing made easy by making them into categories instead of seven or eight different plastic material types so we we'll talk about category 1 2 3 4 that is your rigid flexi mlp and uh, compostable plastic so that made the more easier for the industry to uh, you know comply the epr uh, rule 
second is uh, it says brand agnostic so obviously that might be a step one in initial stage going forward things will be more complex but yes making it brand agnostic uh, it has made uh, life easier for the pibos to meet uh, the compliance norms third is uh, they have made this time geography neutral so obviously uh, there are a lot of debates happening there are different school of thoughts in this process that uh, uh, once we are talking about geography neutral for primarily category 2 and 3 you will see the major uh, cities like uh, no capitals no uh, delhi uh, mumbai uh, kind of or say mark uh, this uh, karnataka is bangalore chennai where we have already multiple helix no as legacy west so obviously i think i'm going to an eye to clear it up before the normal cnt fresh uh, always can be collected to the normal process to participation of ulbs so that be if you look at it really help uh, this geography neutral for two years what cpcb has allowed pibos uh, to you know meet their uh, epr uh, target so thereby uh, we can see i think the heights of helix are getting reduced uh, month on month in major uh, bigger cities uh the other lucky successful factor which i also uh, appreciate is government allowing incineration for category 2 as well so uh, in west to uh, oil west to energy plants or cement plants so that be if you look at uh, they are the major uh, uh, contributors who can now help reduce plastic uh, waste by using legacy waste or rdf to generate uh electricity or uh, steam or power the case may be so that way if you look at these are the four key successful factors which has really helped and also help our bureaucrats to showcase this in g20 forums uh, across the globe wherever it's happening and uh, a lot of countries are eyeing at uh, uh, implementing the epr structure in their respective countries by following the interesting implementation framework what government of india has done so far in last 5 6 years but i think the real acceleration has happened in last 3 years and that be if you look at uh, uh, the real data points are being collected uh, which uh, varies from the data points what cac and cpcb were talking a uh, year before or two year before uh, real figures has come into 3.4 million tons or so i think uh, by uh, next year where Uh, the data point as of now available for almost 24000 entities in terms of pibo will be definitely triple or quadruple so i believe uh, the the data points will substantially give an input to to make analytical decisions so apart from this key success problem factors uh, i believe uh, the uh, uh, next target or additional target which is getting implemented from 25 26 that is your use of recycle content a uh, percentage of around 25% by most of the uh, non food grade uh, packaging and with the uh, help of fssi with some food grade uh, packaging definitely will be a, a very good initiative wherein this recyclable plastic circular economy will definitely get an uh, upgrade now coming to the challenges uh, as we all know you will be the, the legal owners of this scrap or you no know, uh, waste in any of their uh, jurisdiction but how do you fund this you will be where do they get fund today we are putting so much of efforts clearing the helix and uh, you know uh, at least making our bigger cities more cleaner how do we help the ulbs to get funded so that is where market linkage from their mrfs and from their collection centers will definitely be a challenge where they should be able to monetize the kind of material they collect from their respective jurisdiction to the existing process so that is where e-commerce can play a role and uh, companies like mine uh, uh, which uh, runs a digital uh, platform uh, to west commodity to do west commodity trading as well for epr uh, trading will be more helpful and the multiple such companies should uh, come and i believe that will be help to monetize and ulbs will be able to leverage and with that fund they will be able to build more infrastructure in terms of collection centers in terms of mrfs 
Uh, there are a few examples which I have seen in many states, which has already happened and implemented. The one I have seen in Odisha, where uh, self-help groups, primarily for the women group, have been uh, uh, given the responsibility for running the MRFs. And uh, that, uh, uh, I think, experiment uh, for the last one, uh, one, and uh, one and a half year has really yielded better results. So similarly, I have seen in Uttarakhand, particularly for Haldbani and uh, Nainital area, there are certain SAGs who started working on this. So that be one area where implementation of waste management, primarily plastic waste management, from collection and uh, transportation and door-to-door -door collection from both residential institutional area or uh, marketplace areas will be really a uh, good challenge uh, where we will be able to address. Uh, then I believe uh, many states have started putting up or constructing new MRFs. So I think, yes, once we clear the hillocks to uh, process the day-to-day -day waste, we should have uh, enough uh, places where the proper segregation can happen. And also uh, we can uh, leverage uh, e-commerce tools to get monetary benefit, which can be uh, used to increase the infrastructure in respective cities and uh, tier two and tier three uh, towns. And that will be really helpful to address the issue. Apart from that, uh, I believe uh, uh, there are not much collection centers, uh, which has formerly uh, no, government uh, has put in. And uh, as we believe uh, in last two, two and a half years, there are a lot of uh, interest so entrepreneurs are showing to get into the waste management industry itself. So as we know, waste is no longer a waste. Waste also can create wealth. That way, if you look at uh, the enough tractions uh, in the waste management industry, there could be opportunities not only for you know, creating infrastructure and uh, using that as a business opportunity. Also, this could be areas where people can put in collection centers, integrated collection centers. Also, it can be, you know, uh, putting on uh, three R centers or material recovery facilities and small waste to oil plants. Uh, that is what really not geared up as of now. I believe there are almost 100 plus waste to oil plants which have got uh, given approval uh, from respective state uh, pollution control boards. And I believe uh, once uh, there is a uh, proper guidelines uh, available from government to sell their outcome, that could be any kind of fuel, could be diesel or petrol or uh, whatever the oil they manufacture, if they get a proper guideline and uh, and the mechanism to sell in the marketplace, probably uh, there will be more and more entrepreneurs will get into that because that doesn't cost much. The investment to start in West to oil industry is very, very less. So that's, I thought, uh, my thinking on plastic uh, waste management scenario, how the government has performed so far and uh, the key successful factors and a few of the challenges. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rath, for uh, uh, stating out the successful factors and the uh, issues that the industry faces. I'm sure uh, uh, ministry and the government is working to address all the challenges because the focus now is on making this sector, the, re the recycling of plastic and waste, a priority sector. In fact, it is already a priority sector, but in the coming years, we'll see a lot of uh, uh, push to make sure that uh, this sector succeeds. Thank you once again, Mr. Rat. Now calling upon uh, our last speaker for the day, Mr. Ajay Mittal. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vikram. Thank you, Fiki team, for the opportunity. Uh, it was wonderful listening to all the previous speakers. They really highlighted a lot of important points uh, 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 Dr. Smita, your presentation really covered all the important aspects and gave us a very uh, good overview of the plastic waste scenario in, in the country. And you uh, highlighted a lot of important alternatives that are available. So now, uh, in, in um, uh, considering the time uh, is, is short, uh, I would like to share some of our experiences at EarthDate.org where we have a greater focus on uh, in plastic pollution as a campaign. Uh, every year, Earth Day has a theme, and one of the themes uh, for uh, in previous year for Earth Day was in plastic pollution, where we focused on in plastic pollution as a theme, and we have seen a lot of responses from 
people who commemorate uh, the activities across schools, colleges, that there are a lot of initiatives being taken to work on uh, this issue of plastics. I think the good thing about uh, plastic pollution is that it is very visible as one of the speakers also said, it's very visible as a problem. And uh, that is one reason that a lot of mass masses relate to this as a problem. There are other climate and environmental issues, some of them which are not that visible and there is less uh, sensitivity among people about this thing. But on the side of plastic, you will see, especially in the, in the younger generation, there is more sensitivity and there is uh, that is leading to uh, some action being taken by this thing. But uh, probably that is not enough because as uh, some of the speakers also shared, a lot of rules and compliance already exist uh, to make, uh, to address the issue of plastics in a better way. But I think there is a lack of, uh, lack of strict implementation in certain geographies. We have seen case studies of within our country only there are areas where uh, better management, better recycling infrastructure is actually able, we are able to deal with this problem much better, not just plastic, but entire waste problem much better. And today, when we are talking more about circular economy, it gives such a huge opportunity for entrepreneurship. I think that is where also we are seeing a lot of entrepreneurs coming forward to create uh, recycling infrastructure, create alternative products, create more circular business models. There is so much innovation happening. There are so many new products which are in the market. But what needs to be done is that we need greater investments for them. I speak to some of the entrepreneurs because we promote uh, a, a green entrepreneurship as earthpreneurs where we uh, encourage young people who are uh, coming up with solutions to address uh, some of the environmental issues. We promote them and we uh, help them to grow and get more visibility as a solution. And we see all of them lack uh, uh, investments. They need more investment. I think that is where uh, I, I would request organizations like FICI to think more uh, uh, on these lines. How can you support some of these ideas to scale up faster? Because that's really going to help a lot of the solutions uh, to provide sustainable and scalable solutions uh, to grow. And third, uh, I think what is also very important is to also the government needs to be more vigilant about some of the greenwashing products. Like uh, there are a lot of product, products which are in the market which are not actually um, which are being promoted as alternatives of plastics and general masses. Uh, who have the all the good intention to uh, be part of the solution and try to fall into this loop because these products are more visible, they're more readily available. I think that is where the government has a bigger role to play also to uh, control some of these uh, greenwashing solutions which are uh, there in the market. Overall, I think um, there, there is a need of a greater mass movement is what I think because the kind of problem that we are facing in terms of climate change right now and uh, all the environmental issues, they uh, it's more visible, the kind of extreme weather events that we are seeing right now. All of this is, is, is just uh, pushing things to uh, the edge now and we need uh, a mass movement. I am uh, very supportive of the idea of uh, the mission life which the government of India is promoting. I, I believe in that. Movements like this will help uh, masses to become part of the solutions because if we look at uh, the ban which happened last year and it's almost it's uh, one year to the ban of uh, certain single use plastic items which were considered as high littering and low utility items. Uh, in certain geographies, if you see the success of these uh, measures is very, very limited. We will still see a lot of those ma uh, materials still in use uh, in those places. I think that is where strict compliance plus also uh, participation of citizens. I think this is very important and it's where civil society as civil society, our role is also important is that we are creating more awareness. We are reaching out to more people to uh, uh, comply to some of these solutions and also um, uh, adopt the alternatives. Alternatives not in terms of just the products which are alternatives, but alternative practices which are very important. Unless we change um, some of our behaviors and become more conscious, uh, I don't think we will be able to address uh, the complicated problems that we are de uh, dealing in terms of environment and climate change. So I think uh, this is a great initiative by Fiki. I hope uh, this uh, you continue doing such initiatives and our uh, uh, network would love to participate and take your messages to a larger audience uh, through our huge network of schools, colleges and other uh, uh, institutions that we deal with. Thank you.
Thank you, Ajay. And we commend the good work that Earth Day does to make sure that uh, our environment and planet is safe for us in the future. But thank you once again to all the speakers. We have 15 minutes for any Q&A. I see some question and questions which have been posted by our participants in the chat box. Meanwhile, I have one question. I have a couple of questions for some of the speakers. Um, Dr. Balakrishnan, um, there's a, you mentioned about compostable plastics and uh, there is a research I'm not able to recollect who uh, did that research. But uh, they mentioned that uh, compostable plastics leave out microplastic part or microparticles uh, in the environment similar to uh, the way plastic does, right? As they don't break away uh, or they don't disintegrate if the conditions are not idle. So what are the steps that uh, the industry or the processors should look at uh, to make sure that the conditions under which the compostable plastics um, are disposed of or uh, disintegrated are met and in an efficient manner? Sure. Um, so the first thing is, uh, when someone talks of a breakdown or plastics getting disintegrated into fragments, uh, that usually happens when you use an additive technology. So typically there are biodegradable, so-called biodegradable plastics which are available where you have a certain additive. It, it's, it could be a transition metal-based catalyst which could essentially break down your polymer. So what happens is the molecular weight of the material falls and these essentially start fragmenting. Now, these fragments are what actually creates microplastics. When we look at compostable plastics, compostable plastics don't form microplastics. They are essentially thermoplastic, like a polyethylene or a polypropylene or any material. They are just structures. The chemistry has got a carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in the molecule. And because of that, these materials break down. So there is scientific studies done to show compostable plastics do not create microplastics but you are right there are certain forms of biodegradable plastics that do create microplastics and so we have to differentiate between the additive based technologies and some of the technologies which are fully compostable like a PLA or a PVAT material. Thank you Dr. Balakrishnan. Um, next is uh, any one of the speakers can uh, answer that. Um, we all know, and in fact, Dr. Smitha also mentioned that uh, the city of Indore is very successfully, very successful in managing their waste and waste segregation. Um, the reason she mentioned was that we don't have enough recycling facilities in other cities that so that we cannot replicate it. But apart from the recycling facilities, which I see a lot of cities now gearing up to, what are the other issues that has limited the proper management and segregation of waste the way uh, and Indoor has done it. Because the example of Indoor goes on to uh, internationally, as in globally people talk about the city of Indoor. But why only Indoor? Why not other cities and uh, the other cities, maybe not tier one cities, but tier two, tier three cities, which can replicate this model? So anyone from the speakers who would want to? Mr. I Patnaik, you have your hand up. Yeah, yeah. I think, sir, uh, you have rightly said this is a very good question whenever I'm going to any conferences or anything. So this is a similar question is coming up. The first thing is that uh, government has uh, done many years, uh, rules and regulations, which is good for the nation. Second, if you are coming to why you have to indoor city, when you are talking about anything to be implemented on the ground, the two important thing is that one is education, second is awareness. And third thing, you know, is a smart city. Indoor has been rated as the best smart city in the country. Because if you see the entire Indoor city, the dry waste and wheat waste is collected separately. And the dry waste is going to the recycling center separately. There is no mix of the waste. That's me. That collection of the waste from the source in the two ways, dry and wet waste. But if you compare with the other state, that level of awareness or that level of uh, things is not coming up to that. that 
So recycling is a big issue. When the, there is a mixed waste, the recycling will be more difficult. That's why if you see, indoor, the entire facility is coming, dry waste, waste waste is going to be a different center. So that's why indoor is taking more very good and in case of a smart city and doing up a waste management is better than in any of the states. Other states are coming up with that speed, but not with that speed of what Indor is doing. Slowly, slowly, because of the competition among the smart city, other states are also taking the initiatives. They are doing some kind of things on their initiatives, but it will take some time. But yes, the important factor, whether in anything, if you start up with a circular economy or in terms of a single use of plastic or anything, Education and awareness, I think, one of the most important factor when people will educate and source of segregation is a, uh, they, if they start setting, the more of a recycling will be very, very easy. And nowadays, if you see starting from an example, very good example, from a residential society, people are dumping all waste into that. And major, and all the waste will be, it cannot be very difficult. And major people are segregated, people are dumping the food waste also. Segregation of the food waste from the dry waste and make it a recycling purpose, which is a very costlier affair. That's why recycling centers are there, but that people are involved is that. And that awareness, if so long as we have to educate an awareness level, India is a very vast country and the highest populist in the country. So the education awareness level is important to take forward this kind of initiative, which has government formed it, it will take a long time. That basic thing is we have to create awareness among the societies, among the school, colleges, industry, so that the things will be scaled up more rapidly. Thank you, Mr. Patnaik. Uh, anyone else has any comment on this question? I do agree with uh, Mr. Patnaik, whatever he has said, because uh, we had been to indoor recycling cluster very recently. Last year, we had been, we are traveling across the country to see the uh, what are the recycling facilities which is available how it is being managed and what we noticed is that the collection the source source collection which is very important part like bhuvneshwar also where uh, i basically belong to so bhuvneshwar also is a smart city it is also a smart city but the mechanism of source collection of the waste what we noticed in indore is completely different so uh, i think that is where the point lies and uh, uh, you know, what happens is that the dry waste collection, the wet waste collection, all these things are practically, it is in a very well-managed form in Indoor, what we noticed. And here, what we see that everything is being dumped in one particular, like dry waste, food, uh, food waste, all your kitchen waste or anything is being dumped into one packet. And that is why what happens in the recycling area also, se separation becomes a very difficult, sorting then shredding it and all these things becomes very difficult. Whereas, uh, and the recycling facility. See, majority of states, they have got, they think that we can go for plastic waste to roads. We can go for uh, in cement cleans and all these things they are using it or in the form of RDF. So recycling facility is also, it needs to be enhanced in the tier two cities. So to see that it is being amicably recycled. Technology is there, like going for upscaling, ups, uh, like you have upcycling and downcycling. So majority is for downcycling. Now time has come, we should go for, if we are opting for mechanical recycling, let's go for something that is upcycling of the products, value addition, something. Or uh, chemical recycling needs to be promoted, which is very less in India. Uh, only three or four right now are working actually, practically working. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Smitha. Um, so I think we should go to the questions that our participants have asked. Um, so do we have any commercial, like, as an example of commercialized usage of um, compostable plastics or uh, alternatives to plastic in FMCG sector? Um, yeah, uh, I think the, uh, well, the, 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 as Dr. Smitha had mentioned, uh, straws is a classic example, which is, uh, we can see a lot of uh, FMCG companies right now, which the, the, the bent straws that go along with the Tetra packs in the back, uh, either they are paper straws or certified compostable plastic. So 
you have brands like uh, Amul, Parley, uh, all the, uh, you know, using uh, using these these materials. So that's one application. Um, there's also a lot of applications in the e-commerce uh, where you have, uh, if you if anyone would order from Swiggy, Instamart, you could see a lot of their deliveries are coming in certified compostable plastic bags. Uh, I mean that. So it is definitely uh, a lot of applications are coming out in the FMCG space. Uh, Mr. Patnaik, any examples from Dabur you want to quote? I think Dr. Sundar has told the rightly said the classic example is that straw. When in first of July 2020, the straw has been banned, which is used in the Tetra Pak, that's a plastic. Immediately that has been converted and people are adopting paper straw. But while we are replacing something with the plastic, we have to so we have to think that whether it is a sustainability practice or not. Switching to a, plastic, a paper straw is not sustainably advisable because when you are going and thinking for an environment, paper is not. And later on stage, if I'll see, Dabar has already adapted PLA straw, which Dr. Sundar said, polylactic acid. Now in all the straws, though I know the commercialization of PLA straw in India, the demand is very big, but in that demand versus supply is less. So we are already converted into polylactic acid PLA straw and paper straw. One, the more and more it will consumption uh, and the production will happen in India. Definitely, it is the best alternatives to a paper straw. And if a comparison, it is not only the, it is not only, only the alternate. In India, we have to see that one is the cost factor also. Because India is a very vast country and people, you know, starting from lower class to a higher class, if you make and juice and making the straw to a higher cost. Now, what I understand and what I seen in my company in polylactic acid, which is a complete replacement of plastic straw and the cost is very similar to that. But whereas in case of a paper straw, in a paper straw, if you are asking the one straw will more than 50 paisa, whereas in polylactic acid is less than 20 paisa. For a straw of 30 paisa is a huge cost in the euro GC. So that is a classic example here. Dabur is working on various fields in terms of reductions of plastics, but the journey is very, very, uh, the uh, it's a tedious journey. We have to go one by one. Randomly, you cannot change the things like uh, change in case of many flexible flexible packaging also, converting into compostable straw. So that the infrastructure and things are there. So slowly, slowly it will be changed. And definitely we change to the complete picture of the is this, waste management, whether it is a single-use plastic or compostable store or something like that. Thank you, Mr. Patnaik. Um, taking on the next, uh, so through, uh, though under the current uh, plastic waste management rules, there are certain targets for collection of recycling of plastics, considering the sizable quantity of PET is getting downcycled to other products like t-shirts, sports, shoes, roads, etc., which cannot be technically recycled. Should we not promote sustainable packaging options by giving incentives to producers and consumers rather than using plastic in such products which cannot be recycled? So anyone from the, anyone who could answer this? Okay, sir. I will answer to that. If you see the production's uh, capacity and production of plastics in India, what you exactly see by 2040, the, cap the production of the plastic will be doubled. And by 2050, it is 2.5 times. The one way we are saying that we'll do in a circular economy, and if you ask the demand of the plastic, in the one of the statistics, it has been said that by 2050, it is just 2.5 times. So we have to balance in between that. When you are talking about reductions of plastic, then definitely we have to see the reduction of the virgin plastic. How you will do the re reduction of the virgin plastic? More and more plastics into the circular economy, if will come, then the virgin plastic will reduce. That's why government has imposed on regulation by 2025 and 26. 30, 10, and 5. The category 1, your recycle content is 30. 
and we and your flexible is 10 and the third is mlp is the 5 for that everybody has to be gear up because okay people are converting this plastic to t-shirt that nothing harm because plastic you know it has to be degraded it will take more than centuries it is the 400 to 500 years exactly if you think india has uh, already got the freedom in 1947 the plastic we used in 1947 still it is lying on the landfill because to buy degrade degradable to the plastic it will take 400 years that means we think how to reuse a plastic and more and more recycling thing rather go for a linear economy you think for a circular economy and and that way other part also we have to decrease the demand of the plastic because there are various things if you start discussing and that it will lead to any other things also but recycling and rethinking reuse of plastic that will be more in a circular form otherwise it will very very difficult packaging when you're talking about packaging for a secondary and tertiary packaging you can think of that but again if you see when you are talking about a re recycling of packaging again the cost is also a major factor because when you are selling a product of less 50 rupees and recycled product it will more than 70 rupees the question is here as i think one thing we are doing to reduction of virgin plastic why the recycled plastic is costing more that is also another question because we have to see we are staying in india and if we just see the kind of a population we have to see that cost factor quality factor and other factor we have to take into account but a food safety packaging in the primary packaging yes that is uh, already given clearance by fsc it is pending on bis once bis giving the clear signal then the recycled packaging in the food packaging also the target of 30 percent in plastic recycled plastic content will be uh, will be better for all the industry but at present many of the companies have started in that form in secondary and tertiary department thank you mr patnaik once again um, we are just one minute away from our uh, time and we have quite a few other questions also. Unfortunately, we won't be able to take these at, at the moment, but we will note them down and uh, take it up with the respective speakers and seek a clarification, seek a response to these questions. So uh, my apologies to the participants for not taking all the questions at the moment. And but thank you for uh, posting these up. Uh, we will take this up. Right. So we have come to an end of this fourth webinar of the B4E series, and we are thankful to all our speakers here for their views, for their uh, thoughts on the subject, and uh, we hope that we uh, take your. Uh, recommendations and advice further and work towards a cleaner and a and, and a greener uh, environment ahead usage of plastics and manage plastic management is something which industry takes in very critically and Fiki has been working on it so uh, we thank you once again uh, today we heard from an industry PIBO we heard from an association we heard from a government agency uh, we heard from a processor and for a not-for-profit organization working mm -hmm. towards betterment of the environment. So we have, in fact, heard from all the critical stakeholders of this uh, sector. We hope um, all our participants uh, benefited from this, um, this uh, webinar. And we look forward to having you in the future such webinars also. I thank my speakers once again, and I thank my team for organizing this. Thank you, everyone.